I'm Michael Hennen, and you are watching Infamous Instruments. Hello everybody, welcome back to the fourth episode of Infamous Instruments. We're getting quite a ways through this series. Just a reminder, there will be one more episode after this one. So, today we are talking about the concertina box. Many of you probably have no idea what this is or what I'm talking about. Essentially, this is in the accordion family, and you know what an accordion is. And this is different though, because on an accordion you have piano keys on the side that you play like this. But on the concertina, you have buttons on both sides, your left hand being your rhythm side, as you can hear, and your right side being your melody side. So when you play these together, it creates what would be called a polka or a waltz. A polka being two beats, as you can hear. One, two, 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 one, two. And a waltz being three beats. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. <clears throat> so this is essentially used in polka music and waltzes. The concertina is a big part of Minnesota's history, especially in the New Prague area. My teacher, actually, Jerry Menar, he is from New Prague, and he is one of the best in the world at playing the concertina. He now owns Hengel concertinas, which were originally made by Christy Hengel in New Ulm. He started in Sleepy Eye. He bought the equipment from a company called Pearl's Queen in Chicago in around 1958 and then from there he went on and he moved the equipment to Sleepy Eye and then to New Ulm. And he's been making these Hengel concertinas now for a long time and I believe in 1998 Jerry said he took over Hengel concertinas and now he builds them in New Prague, Minnesota. So it's pretty cool. Here's a picture of one. And here's a video of me playing Jerry's personal concertina. So the concertina was originally invented in Germany and it was made as a working classman's instrument because you know back in the day in the 1800s you know, you'd have like the people who were high class upper class who would play like the harp and the piano and these expensive instruments but you know these working class people could not afford these thousand dollar instruments that were super nice and you know hard to come by expensive so the first concertina looked a little bit something like this right there and this was it wasn't great but it was music you know anyone could kind of pick it up and play it the music was very simple because just like a concertina now the notes are numbered so you can see right here is the one note 
and I just played one, two, three, four, which is your G arpeggio. So back in the day, it did not have nearly as many notes as it does right now. It was in one key, and almost anyone could play it. They could look at the music and figure it out. And people really liked this, and eventually it evolved and it became what is now known as the concertina box where it's fully chromatic that means that anything that you can play on a piano you can play on a concertina although they do come in different keys all that means though is what my one note is so on a concertina when I push the one it is a G and when I pull the one it is a D so the most common box, which is what this one is, is called a C box, which is in the key of C. From there, you can go a whole step down in the key of B flat, another whole step down in the key of A flat, or you can go to an E flat. And those are the most common four. You can get them in just about anything, but the most common is a C box, because then you can play with all other instruments. So what's really interesting about the concertina is you could take music that was written a hundred years ago and I could play it on my concertina box that I'm holding right now that was made maybe 10 years ago. Here's a song called The Girl I Left Behind Waltz and it was written a long time ago and I'm going to play it with the paper that was written a long time ago and we'll see how it sounds. So the song that I just played, as you probably could recognize, was a waltz because the rhythm went It had three beats instead of two. So over the years, as the polka music evolved along with the concertina, it became pretty popular around the 1950s and 60s and still to this day is played a little bit but is more of an older generation kind of music. So as polka music evolved and got more popular, you know, it became a lot more mainstream and a lot of these songs started to have words to them. A lot of you have probably heard the beer barrel polka. I'll play a little bit of that right here. So here's another one a lot of you probably know, although I'm not going to sing it because the words might be a little offensive, but it's called the She's Too Fat For Me Polka, otherwise known as the Village Tavern Polka, as I like to call it. So now I'm going to play one of my favorite waltzes, and this is called the Hunter's Waltz. And you might recognize this one because it is in the intro of all my videos. Take a listen.
Thank you for watching this video on the concertina. I will be back in two weeks with my final episode on what you've all been waiting for, the electric guitar. This will be a very fun episode, so make sure that you stay tuned for it. Make sure you follow us on Twitter at JHS Creative Communications. And after all, this is a school project, so make sure you support some of my classmates, especially one of my buddies, Bryson. His YouTube page is called Situational Shift. If you go down and you click the account and you find Situational Shift on there and you just watch his video, once again, I'm Michael Hennen and you have watched Infamous Instruments. Thank you. If you would like to see more videos like this, check out my new YouTube channel at JHS Communications. Starting April 7th, every other week, I will be posting a new video on a new instrument talking about its history and then playing it and showing how it works. Thank you.